Posting on the corner with yours truly and Carnito. And DJ Missy. DJ Missy, I love to laugh. Me too. I love talking to legends. What's up? People that walk it like they talking. Oh, okay then. Let's go to DC. <laughs> Donnell Rob is in the studio. <laughs> Man, I know I'm old because I remember last time anybody introduced me as being from DC. <laughs> <laughs> they say everything. People think I'm from Brooklyn all day, every day, son. But DC, damn, I'm old. Like, yeah, from District of Columbia. He likes chicken wings with mumbo sauce. That right? <laughs> you know, he likes salt and pepper ketchup, hot sauce, salt and pepper ketchup. Don't get mad. If you went to any store, you know that voice. You want salt and pepper ketchup? Salt and pepper hot sauce, salt and pepper ketchup? Just give it to me right now. <laughs> but I will say, I will. I, I, I respect that because I am a true uh, Redskins fan. You know a true Redskins fan when I don't mention the Washington football team or the Commanders. It's well, all about the say, Redskins. It's not the Commanders. <laughs> yes, HCTR. I'm from Cleveland. Our, we still the Indians. Oh, yeah? I know. I'm saying we need to go back. I don't I don't want to mess up anything. Redskins finally got a good season. Yes, they're looking good. Redskins for years was the only team that could be up by 32 points with two minutes left in the game, and you would not change the channel or leave the room. <laughs> You'll be like, nah, man, they got two timeouts. All they need is five touchdowns and an onside kick, and they'd be right in the game. And right in order, they'd be like this, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. But they they looking good. That guy, Jay, that boy Jay Daniels looks good. Mm -hmm. The team is energized, and hopefully we can get a playoff run. Yes, oh, sir. that's right. So how you feeling? How you doing mentally? That sounds like you got a secret question you want to ask me. No, I, yes, I, I, I know it. I, uh, mentally? Yeah, how you doing mentally? Because comedians Something's got a hold on me lately. <laughs> you saw you, y'all moved on Teddy Swift. I don't know myself anymore. <laughs> I ask everybody that. Feels like the walls are all closing. I can't stand her. <laughs> and the devil's knocking at my door. I'm going to be all right. Oh, okay. Did you do it? Out of my mind. How many times <laughs> did I tell God you? Damn. Where you going? Where you going? Don't go nowhere. I'm no good at being alone. <laughs> you not worried? Yeah, it's taking its toll on me. Yes, that's what I'm going through. No, uh, matter of fact, life is good. Okay, good. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So yeah. you in ATL. Why you in ATL Man, right my now? my life is horrible right now. Don't <laughs> <laughs> <Talk> about it. <laughs> ah. But did you do it? But did you do it? <laughs> what happened How's going to break up with you after they already broke up with you to break up with you again? <laughs> How can you get broke? Who get broke up on three times? <laughs> okay, no, I'm feeling good. How are you? <laughs> no, I'm just saying I'm good. I'm better. I'm better. I'm you better. feel better now? Yeah, I do. You got a little bit more you need to release? No, 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 I'm good. Who takes last? That's what you said. I don't want to talk about that. You're going to make me die. <laughs> okay, I'm good. Yeah, so I'm at the uh, comedy club this weekend. Okay. Yes. You know, pouring out my emotions. Right. Right. Getting in touch with it, dealing with the results of this election and mm -hmm. a lot of other things. Okay. Right. So how do you feel about the results I of this election? I can't believe I did everything I could. All you had to do was stay out my phone. Ah! Got there. There you go looking for it. Stay out my phone. Stay out my phone. Nosy, that's your phone over here. My phone over here. Mind your she, phone she's business. trying to see something. No, okay, so yeah, everything's good. Um, Yeah. Okay, are you excited yeah. for your show? I'm always excited about my show. Okay. That's the only thing in my life that I'm 100% in control of. Yes. Right. That's my therapy. Teddy Swim's a good, a good artist, and I'm really into his music right now. He has an album called I've Tried Everything But Therapy, and i tried everything but therapy. Mm. That's why. Maybe you should. Maybe uh, you should no, no, no. I'm excited <laughs> about my. I'm excited about my show because I've been doing comedy over 30 years, mm -hmm. and I love it. Every year, the first time, it, and if people people that were there, the first time I ever touched the mic, I got a standing ovation. Come on now, that's big. First time I ever touched the mic, I knew that that was what I was gonna do for the rest of my life. Mm. I knew that I was gonna give myself a plan B. Um, and the crazy thing was I was a military police officer in the Air Force, and I was waiting to be a D.C. police officer mm. when I got the um, the comedy book. But it was as soon as I went to say the first time, I was like, I got to figure out how I'm going to get fired from my job because this is what's going to be doing forever. Mm. Wow. If anybody's been following my career, I've always been funny. You know what I mean? I wasn't polished. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was like a new jack of time, but I've always been funny. And after 30-plus year career, every year I feel like I get better. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just saying that. It's my fans. One of the best compliments I get is that I come and see you at this club every year, and every year you do something different. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to. I'm not wasting your money. Mm -hmm. You can tell us comments go out there. You can tell us a money grab, bro. You was here last year. You doing the exact That's same me. routine. I pride myself on evolving. I pride myself on giving the audience the best I can give them. And uh, I mean, I'm, I've had hundreds of thousands of shows. 
And to this point right now, every, 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 every time I go on stage, I go on stage to be better than the last time. And that's already been at a very high level. Yes, sir. And anybody that um, knows me, has been following me for the years, they'll say the same thing. If some of your listeners had a chance to come to the Dave Chappelle show at State Farm Arena, mm -hmm. 17,000, I had a feeling like it was helicopters over that place. Mm -hmm. And it was Dave Chappelle, and it was uh, Kevin Hart, and it was Tip. It was a nice lineup of people. But, you know, uh, when I went up there, I just went in and just was throwing bombs. And that's what I'm going to do this weekend. Yes, Atlanta Comedy Theater down there. Rollins is going to be live. Posting on the corner with George Shirley Incognito, DJ Misses. I want to go to 30 years ago when you first touched that mic. What city was that in? Washington, D.C. How you love that. Yeah, now, and the, the crazy thing was I never had, you know, you talk to a lot of comedians. They say, uh, I always knew I was going to be funny. I knew I was going to be a comedian. I never thought about this. My first mm -hmm. thing I wanted to do, I wanted to be an architect, but I sucked in math, so that wasn't going to happen. That's what maybe I build a houses, but I wasn't handy with a, with a hammer. Then that's when I um, went in, in, into the military. While I was waiting to be a, a D.C. police officer, I used to be head of security uh, at a grocery store, right? I know you want to laugh. Like, no, I don't. I do. Top flight. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to laugh. Yo, Can you imagine? Yo, I took my job seriously. I, I was a general, son. I was chasing crackhead out the <laughs> store and everything. And there was a guy that used to work for Hostess Cupcake Company, and he was a comedian at night. Yeah. And he would stock the store up, and he would give away free tickets to the show, mm -hmm. uh, to the comedy show. So I used to go there just with the free tickets and a lot of people that I work with, and I was a heckler. I used to roast. I used to let the community. I started, I was so good as a heckler and a roaster that people started coming to the show to hear me roast. <laughs> they, didn't ask, they didn't want to know what community they was like, is that dude that working Safeway? <laughs> 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 and I was so cocky, I tried to make a door deal with the club owner. I never touched the mic. I was like, because I knew people started coming to hear me heckle. Yeah. I went up to him. I said, yeah, it looks like um, I've increased your business by about 30%. And maybe when he looked at me like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you, that never happens. You were trying to get money. And you, I'm paying to get in, getting tickets or whatever, and then st try to cut a deal. But it was like a lot of hecklers are people that want to do comedy but don't have the heart to do it. And normally a club like this, okay, yeah, you're funny, you're funny, you're funny from your, from your chair. But why don't you go up there? They dared me, and I never looked back. Come on. I like yeah. that. Man, mm -hmm. I was I was Googling. I ain't going to cap you down like yeah. I've just been following you from day one, right? Okay. I, I'm Googling it, and you tell us the military story. First of all, thank you for your service. Veterans Day weekend. Hello. Yes. Didn't know you was a veteran. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here we I are. I wasn't patriotic, but I'm a veteran. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let that I wasn't a white boy military. Yes, right. we're going to protect right. the country. Right. Right. I was like, so I mean, how many days off I get? I get a vacation? Right. <laughs> they told me I was going to get an airplane. I was like, sign me up. So, <laughs> so you're an MP, military police officer, and yeah. ironically, the very very first movie that you start in, your role is a cop. Which one's that? Um, what movie was that? I told you I googled it now. What was the movie? Uh, I forget the name of it, but it was like uh, it, it was in the late eighties. Yeah, it, it was. In, uh, it couldn't have been the late eighties because I didn't start until like mid nineties. It was a movie with the dude. I know you're talking about. It was a movie with the guy who played ET. Um, in ET, who was the young actor name? Anybody know that? Mm -hmm. Waiting for your time. If y'all could Google it, I forget I the name of it. It was a movie with him, and it was the first role I did where I played a cop. And it was like cop one or cop two. You only get like three lines. Yeah. And I was so green to acting, I didn't know what I was doing. that I didn't realize that I had to pull somebody out of the back seat, right? So I thought it was going to be the actual actor in the back seat. When you open the door, it's a camera. <laughs> I was like, I, was like ah! I didn't know what I was doing. But that was the, that was the first, first thing, um, movie. First TV role I did was on Law & Order. Yeah. And I had only been out on my third audition, and I had went in as a, um, I went to audition as a parking lot attendant, because everybody who's an actor in New York, they say you're not an actor in New York if you haven't been on Law & Order. They got so many shows, so right. many opportunities. And I had auditioned to be this parking lot attendant, and I remember my agent um, called me. She said, you booked, kiddo. Oh my God, that was like my second audition. And I was like, yes, I was so happy. And then she said, but they don't want you for the guard, the guard, uh, the parking lot attendant. They want you to play an African um, cab driver. Sometimes they'll, you'll audition for something. They see, they said they want you to play they an African something else. cab driver. And I, and I told, I asked my agent, I said, you think I should practice an African <laughs> accent? 
Uh-huh. She said, no, never do that. Do what you did in the audition. Mm-hmm. Right? And it didn't make sense to me. It didn't make no sense for me to go from parking lot attendant to to be clear and say an African cab driver. So uh, when I get on set, Arthur Formey, he's been a director for Law & Order for probably like 25, 30 years. When he put me to the side, the first thing he said, can you do a French sort of African accent? <laughs> That's the first yeah, thing he said to me. Thing. And the first thing I said out my mouth was, it was this one. <laughs> <laughs> and she was bleeding for her leg. I look out, I look in her prison, there was a gun in it. <laughs> it probably was a horrible accent, but I'm glad I did not listen to my agent. Right. And the fact that, and when I did it, he was so excited that I didn't have to say, give me a second or anything. I, as soon as he said it, I belted out the lines and he said, boom, okay. that was it. Yep. <laughs> Oh, that's cold. The name of that movie was Fever, by the way. Yeah, I remember it. That's yep, it, that right was a favorite one. Yeah, that was a fa- yep. What's some advice you got for yourself? Don't don't be on a yacht with Diddy. I, okay, because what? what you brought what we seen. I, I, we no, seen. No, that's Diddy. what I was saying. <laughs> we seen the bitches. I said, you but you said it was no a day party. Oil. You it said was it was a day, day party. party. It was a day party, and that <laughs> some crazy thing is, I literally know how to make take lemons and make lemonade. Mm-hmm. That picture was a picture that I took. It was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, that picture would have felt like an iconic picture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 10 years ago, oh, I see y'all. I didn't even really know to the extent of things that he was doing or anything like that. And in that moment, I was proud to take that picture. And if you can see in that picture too, if you see it, I was I was clearly lit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was clearly lit. I was having a good time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I knew I was lit. Anytime Diddy look at you, be like, is you are you gonna be all right? <laughs> you told me, no. yo. He was like, man, if y'all don't get him off my yacht, man, I had burnt a hole in this three hundred thousand dollars sofa. Oh. It was, and I was there because Dave Chappelle, myself, and our families, we took a a, 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 a holiday vacation, mm-hmm. St. Martin, and I think at that time, Diddy you always would have a, a party in St. Bart. Mm-hmm. The unfortunate thing about it is that whatever's going on in the news with him, like everybody needs to understand, every party was not a freak off party. Mm-hmm. In fact, I was insulted I didn't get invited to the freak off. Please. <laughs> I was like, y'all got me around all these goddamn kids, man. I'm sick of my kids. <laughs> I said, y'all said we was bad boys. What's popping? <laughs> Come on and play. I know that late, I know they like that joke in Atlanta. So, so y'all can do whatever y'all want to do. <laughs> yas, but no and yas at the same time. No, for Nah, real. it was like that crazy thing that that. That 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 photo was I thought it was a dope moment. And mm-hmm. then if you look at that picture, everybody in the back row is tall, right? They were so mad at me because I was lit on that boat. <laughs> they didn't want me to be in the picture. They tried to elbow me out. I was like, y'all ain't gonna disrespect me like that. <laughs> so what happens when you're trying to get in a picture and nobody won't get you in? I'm gonna go to the go, front. Go to the front. Mm-hmm. I went to the front. I feel like that guy Zeke is explaining that story. What's his name? Um uh, oh, well, Freaky Ziggy, he's like, I was like, 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 like this. No, he said, and then he, he grabbed me. He grabbed me. Oh, and I'm dead. I'm, I'm, I'm boom. <laughs> and I blocked him off. And then he pulled out the hammer. <laughs> so I swing out and, and I pull out the out. hammer. I pull out the hammer. He swing his body and like look, this. Yeah. And I, I grab said, the oh, chain. Yeah. I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> That's what happened to me. That's what happened to me, <laughs> son. You go to the front. I, I go to the back. <laughs> I'm trying to get in the picture. I'm moving left. They moving right. I'm moving left. And then I they had a bottle of Ciroc. Yeah. <laughs> And I had grabbed it. <laughs> you know what? Well, I had grabbed it. And then dude pulled out the <laughs> bottle of baby oil. <laughs> and I was like, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> ah! <laughs> well, the picture, I did. I, I was going left, right, left. Then I got in the front, took the picture. Yeah. <laughs> what I didn't know was idiot. Behind your ass. Behind me. These, was, these was oiled up and everything. <laughs> and I think he said, bad boy. Come on. And that's what happened. That's what happened. <laughs>
Ooh, boy, man, that's funny. That's what he said. Then I got him in the full Nelson. No, but no. When he did his legs and switched he his said, legs. I swung down, the nigga around. He said, I swung him around. <laughs> oh, man, that was the funniest story ever. Oh, Ain't no man. boy. That and Soldier Boy got to be the best thing. Nah, best for real. Pop, 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 pop. Shot the nigga. Yeah, shot him. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Black people always shoot sideways. Nobody got no aim. It'd be like, blah, 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 blah. Everywhere. Blop. And what guns make that noise? Blop, bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> yeah, that's the story. And um, that's I how you end up in that picture, bro. Huh? That's how you end up in that's that picture. That's how I end up. I mean, people can, I'm a comedian. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't take myself that serious. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Even when, the funny thing about it, even when I did that interview, it got exposed on the Breakfast Club, right? Mm-hmm. Not exposed, but it was like, I gave them the picture. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I might as well get ahead of it because it's a picture. Create that your own narrative. Create my own narrative. I was like this. It's going to be public mm-hmm. or whatever. I gave it. The funny. Here's the funny thing about it because Charlemagne couldn't wait to show that picture. <laughs> he couldn't wait. He would, I was like, what's up? He was like, look at Donnell and Diddy, y'all. <laughs> look at Donnell and Diddy, y'all. Guys, guys. That's him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> And he's such a double agent. He's such a, he a double agent. Oh my God, he sent no. me a picture of uh, DJ Envy, right? Um, R. Kelly um, flew him in for something, right? <laughs> he's such a double. He, Charlemagne is spy versus spy. He, I, I gave him the nasty work. He gave me the nasty work. Yeah. As soon as Envy said so, I was like, this, you got flewed in. You've been flued. <laughs> You've been flued. You know you was flued, and that was it. But I took it, it could have been a moment that people could have twisted and said whatever. But and I will say this, in no defense of anything that he's been accused of or whatever, the relationship that I had him, which wasn't a, like a cool relationship, like we boys or anything, but anytime I've had an encounter with him and meet him, one of them, one time was when I did a Bad Boys of Comedy. Yeah. Another time it was a party in, 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 in Hollywood, and I was out on the sidewalk, and I was going through it with my baby mother, right? I didn't want to hear nothing. I, I, I didn't want to hear nobody tell me any nice advice or anything. <laughs> I just wanted to hear, man, nobody tripping off of her or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And I asked him, just out of nowhere, I was like, man, what do you do, man? I said, what do you do? And he looked at me. He said, just be nice to her, right? It's ironic that he would tell me that, mm-hmm. and then all these things come to light. Right. But he was like, just be nice to her. And that's why I tell people, especially as a celebrity, uh, sometimes you know people different from way the media. I think there's a lot of people, there's a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Mm-hmm. Especially when you start entering certain type of drugs into an equation, a person is a totally different person than you would see them normally. Me, even when I'm on TMZ, I'm on TMZ a lot. When they catch me coming to the airport, I'm polished. Good evening, TMZ. How are you doing? Right. <laughs> yes, I can answer that question. <laughs> but if you catch me at 2 o'clock, come out of the club. I say, uh, What's that? 100 bottles of beer on the wall. <laughs> and one of those bottles. I'm a different person. So not to not to take away from anything, but it's just very interesting time. But the thing, the funny thing to me is that this was all started when Cat Williams blew that interview up on Club Shay Shay. When he said these words, and they resonated throughout the whole year, what? all lies would be exposed. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It was wide open. But the thing about the irony of it is, Cat Williams didn't tell us anything that we didn't already know about Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Hollywood is an evil, sinister, devilish place. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, when people first get to Hollywood, they love those parties. They love going to them joints. Yo, it's popping over here. Y'all won't believe y'all get up here, son. I'm telling y'all, we're going to get it popping, yo. Bring some magnums. Let's go. Right? But then you come to a point in your life, you want to change your life, your perception and everything. And then you like, the devil, I don't want to dance no more. And the mm-hmm. devil's like, you can't leave yet. <laughs> we have one more function to go to. Hell no. And now you're trying to change it up. Right. I tell people all the time, my son, I had a nine-year-old son, old enough to be my grandson, but it is what it is. <laughs> And he was talking to me. I was like, what do you want to do? He said, Daddy, I want to do entertainment or whatever. And you most dads would be like, oh, yeah. I'm like, mm. you sure? Right. Please, I'm like, because my son, he, sometimes he gets sensitive. I'm like, man, if this is something you want to do, I said, you got to realize, you're not going to get the support from a lot of people. Most of the time, it's going to be no's. Most of the time, it's going to be going back to a drawing board. And if you can't deal with that, Maybe you made to think of something else. You could be a funny doctor, a funny lawyer, whatever. 
but he said, you inspire me. And I was like, all right. But, like, I do know what this business is about. Right. And a lot of times you got to make decisions. Am I ready for this? This, this is very interesting life. It's a very interesting lifestyle. I will say last 10 years, a lot of things um, have changed in regard to the Me Too movement mm -hmm. and a lot of stuff. Places I found myself guilty of myself. It wasn't nothing for me to go to on on tour, to, on a set, and um, you know I'm in a makeup chair, flirting with chicks, talking trash, and stuff like that. Years ago, they've been took like, oh, he's just silly. But now, you gotta be cautious on how you move and mm -hmm. just try Definitely. to try to stay as clean as possible. It's a tough thing, but. When it comes sure. to comedy in today's challenging climate, do you find it more interesting of a challenge to walk around? Because, you know, you could be funny back in the day. just Well, me, I just think that because it it really separates me from a lot of other comics. Because some people are like, well, I can't say this because of that. I can't say this because of that. And I don't do that. I'm going to say whatever I feel. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not uh, bound to a corporation. You know what I'm saying? Just like you guys have a job to do. You mm -hmm. have to be a certain point, you have to be responsible. I don't have to answer to anybody. I'm not I'm not in fear of losing a TV job because I don't have TV jobs. I'm not in fear of losing an acting role because I don't get a lot of acting roles. In fact, the last, probably the last six, seven years of my career, anything that I've been on, it haven't been from me doing an audition. It's been from somebody saying, we want this guy and that's it. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a problem with doing the dance, but I only want to dance with somebody that, that wanted to Dance for me. I don't want to be compared to anybody. I don't want to be up for a role against anybody. I want to. I want people to say we just want Donnell. What's well, for you? It's for you. For me, it's for me. Mm -hmm. And that's why I lean heavily on the stand up because this is what pays my bills. It's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got some TV gigs. It ain't nothing to buy. Nothing crazy with or nothing. Mm -hmm. But you know, the thing that I know I can control. Nobody can tell me no. Only people that can fire me from this job is the fans. Mm -hmm. And after thirty some years, the people that's solid with me, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be solid with me forever. So as long as I can put my name on the marquee, and people want to pay to see me, then I'll be good. Sure. That's why I don't feel the pressure of an audition like a lot of people do. Let's have some fun. What's one of your most favorite road memories? Uh, you try and get me locked up, son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was that fun. It was that fun. I lose control. <laughs> No, I tell you that's story at the bar. I ain't telling you that one it is. <laughs> I just I have a lot of good memories, mm. good memories with good people, but I don't want to be specific on some of my fun. Yeah, they, they will definitely get me canceled. Gotcha. <laughs> what you working on right now that you could tell us about? Um, the only thing I've been I started a podcast during a pandemic mm. that I was aggressively doing because I didn't have anything else to do, mm. and then once the world opened back up. I was like, well, this podcast can wait. I'm going to go get my money because I hadn't worked in so long. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, like, really um, d wasn't involved with it. But about three months ago, I just started back up again. It's the Donnell Rawlings Show on YouTube and all podcast platforms. And I say uh, the reason why I'm more excited about that than anything because it's something I can do. Mm -hmm. I do it my way. Nobody can tell me no. So I'm trying to get that charge back up. I just did an interview with, I was telling you, how Teddy Swims. Mm -hmm. I had Dr. Um, Dr. Umar on there. <laughs> I just want to do something different where people can, like, I don't have a traditional way of interviewing. I ask crazy questions. But other than that, you know, I get, you know, little roles here and there. But most part, I'm just trying to be the best stand-up I could be. I can't, a director can be like, we like him. We want to hire him. Mm -hmm. We don't want him. We do. I'm not in control of that. So the thing that I'm super passionate about it's doing stand up. But I did tell myself last year, every year I try to evolve. I started wearing suits on stage and trying to be like present myself a different way. Mm -hmm. And I think now that people know me as a funny stand up, but I'm connected with a lot of people. I have a great vision. I know how to put things together. I know how to put a team together. So uh, I'm really aggressively trying to go and wear my producer's hat. For sure. Method Man said it some years ago, I'm tired of being the chump in the front. I want to be the Mac in the back. Mm. I want to be the person that you can come to and be like, Donnell, when I first started, I used to call myself a humorist because that is a person whose work is in, like humorous is, a humorist can write a funny song, mm -hmm. a funny book, a funny poem. I think that I'm I'm never going to stop doing stand-up, but I'm more excited about creating opportunities for myself and other talented people now.
For sure. What's some advice you got for the young and upcoming comedians? I share this story. That's a question I get a lot. Mm -hmm. And my advice to young up-and-coming comics is don't ask for advice. Mm. You're trying to cheat the game, you're asking for advice. Because <clears throat> you don't, you're just trying to start a conversation. You don't want really, you don't want the advice. Mm. <clears throat> and the reason, particular story, about four years ago, there was a young comic that was under the same umbrella as my management team. And my manager asked me to give him um, a guest spot. And I gave him a guest spot. He was all excited. Daniel, what piece of young, one piece of advice you can give a young comic? Coming up, I said, don't ask for advice. Everything that you're going to learn, you're going to learn it through performing, through the microphone. He said, oh, man, that's some great advice. Thank you. A year later, the same comic, the same comic in the same venue came up to me and said, Donnie, what a, one piece of advice you can give a young comic coming up today? I said, you don't listen to advice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's exactly why. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You don't listen to it. Right. You just want to say it. Mm -hmm. And needless to say, he don't have a career now. Mm. But I will say, I'll take that back. The number one thing you can do as a young comic is to be aggressive about performing, mm -hmm. about stage time. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to ever know who you are if you don't aggressively try to get on stage. Mm -hmm. Like you have these comics that go to clubs and whatever, never, never perform just want to shake hands, get a drink, and pull a chick or whatever. You got that's one thing when I first started, I was annoying. I always was always I want to get on stage. I could be at a spot on a Thursday and rip the room. And this one I was super broke. Get ripped the room for like $30, $40. And I come back to the same club. I was like, can I do another spot? It was like, you were just here last week. I was like, I got new jokes. Hmm. Right. You know, that's the one thing, you know, away from what I said, I meant that it's just it's all about stage time. I love how music, comedy, and sports all correlate. Now, you spoke to us about being at State Farm Arena, uh, Dave Chappelle, uh, some other comments with Derek Kevin Hart, as well as Tip. Have you caught Tip on stage yet? Have I caught him on? Here's the crazy thing about his story. I'm probably one of the first people that knew that was his aspiration because we've been knowing each other for years, right? And everywhere he'd go, he'd be in the city, he'd be like, yeah, you know where a comedy club at I could go to? And he used to, he'll pop up, he used to pop up the comedy theater. Him and his wife would be there, right, You as, as spectators. And every city he'd go to, he would ask me this. And then one day, I just said, man, when are you gonna get your ass on stage? He said, man, I just did it. And it was, I think he was like a week into it. And I commend him. To be an iconic rap star, movie guy, TV guy, producer, to say, this is what people never want to say, I want to start over on something else mm -hmm. from zero. Mm -hmm. He did have an edge because he was already a superstar, and people were super critical of him. A lot of people, they was hating on him. Oh, he's taking away stage time. Well, I'm sorry, he just happened to be a superstar. right? But the work ethics he had at the beginning stage up until now, the work ethics he had as far as I would. I remember one time I had a show in L.A. and he had just touched down at LAX or wherever it was, and he drove an hour and 20 minutes just to do a 10-minute guest spot on my show. He always said, D, whatever you need me for, you know, I'm, I'm going to be there. He really cares about being good. Mm -hmm. And i tell you another thing. There was a moment when I say he, he's in it and he gets it. You, um, his boy Clay, yeah, right. Clay, I knew Clay for like years. Brothers. Yeah, that I, just a, to, just to see two brothers being able to get money like that together for so long, it was very tragic when Clay passed away. He hurt a lot of people, but I also know Clay would say, "Keep going to get that money." It was uh, Tip had to do uh, um, Barclay, and we still know that, you know, t uh, Deep South in New York sometimes bump heads. You already feel that it's going to be like some, some conflict because, like, I will tell you, being up there, they used to be like this. They didn't mess with the country folk. They liked the way they talked. You know what I'm saying? Called them country, and they always had to fight against that. He had to do Barclay, and he was doing Barclay, and um, they started booing him. Right? They booing him on stage. He booing him, and Clay got the camera right here. If you go to this page, it's still there. He got the camera right here. The camera starts shaking a little bit. You don't know what's going to happen. The crowd's like, boo. Because when you see Tip, you think he's going to do a song. If First off, people are not used to 
I'm doing stand up. Right. And he was up there and they was booing him, booing him. And then he said, he said, wait a minute, hold on, DJ. Y'all like to do the DJ. And he um he told the DJ drop one of his songs, right? They went from booing like, oh. <laughs> and then he said, man, I wish the hell I would, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Clay was back, man. Ursa often I go back just to remember their relationship. And you could tell Clay was silent for a minute. And he said, fight back. That's right. Fight back. Fight back. He flipped it from booing to, man, I wish the hell I would. Y'all ain't paid me for that, whatever. He did a couple jokes and he bounced. But this was a guy I was only doing for three or four months. Right. You doing three or four months, and he always had the leverage. He could go out there, rap, go to that, but he wants people to see him as someone that takes it serious. Yes. The very articulate guy, great storyteller. So it only makes, when people's like, what are you trying to do? It makes sense. And guess what? For all of y'all comedians who want to talk trash about him, he still work harder than y'all. Yep. He's still in the clubs every night. I'm talking about just five or ten minutes, any spot. Hell, I want to get better. And just like, and I never gave him that advice of the mic would tell you, but I'm pretty sure that the mic would tell him. And we talk every once in a while. I still think he's got another level. He's very transparent on stage, right? It's gonna be something that clicks. And I I had told him, I said, I think his son King having a kid. Mm -hmm. I said, man, watch, something is going to click. You know, something's going to click with King. Something's going to click with you. Something's going to tighten the relationship. And you're going to be able to talk about it. I always tell them, you know, it's easy to try to write a joke, but living a joke and just like, your life, bro. Tell these people the real deal. Mm -hmm. That's when you're original. That's when you're authentic. And that's when people say that nobody can do it the way he do it. And I, I wish him the best of luck. <laughs> Oh, man, Ida, you've been doing comedy for years, making people laugh. Who is a comedian that's made you laugh the hardest? Uh, it's people. Who's made me laugh the hardest? I know it sounds, it ain't no, like, person that's, like, the most famous or nothing. Tony Roberts is a guy that makes me laugh yeah, he's funny. the hardest. Um, uh, in a sinister way, Corey Holcomb makes me laugh. Very hard. You know, Dave Chappelle, he, the interesting thing about Dave, he makes me think and laugh at the same time. And then he makes me realize that, like, we can we, we can make people laugh, but when you can make them think and make them socially conscious about something in the middle of a laugh, that's a, that's a powerful situation. Martin Lawrence was the first. I remember Martin Lawrence, before I was even doing comedy, and I was like, I was, it was his You So Crazy special. No, not, not too many people. That was his breakout stand-up center on HBO. Nobody, that's when the HBO special was breaking people. And I didn't know who he was. I was in the bed with this chick, right? And uh, we was, it came on. It was like Martin Lawrence. And he came out, little skinny dude with big ears. And I didn't know who he was, right? But I just was fascinated. And he said, give it up for a brother making money the right way. He said, when you're making money the right way, you could tell your lady stuff like, shut the F up. And she'll shut up, too. She'd be like, you so crazy. <laughs> I was in the bed, I'd be like this. Who is this dude? Because <laughs> he just, it kind of, like, Martin that hasn't produced the dopest special. Martin's comedy for him was the setup for him to be a, a global movie star. Mm -hmm. You know, he had a lot more to offer than, than stand-up. But that, when I was watching, I was like, He's saying stuff that I would say, round away stuff, just like guys on the corner, the family mm -hmm. union, just kicking it. And that kind of like excited me about stand up. Not to the point I wanted to do it, but I was like, man, I remember when I first started, a lot of people used to say, man, you remind me so much of Martin. And I don't know if it's because both of us from the DC area or whatever, mm -hmm. and then maybe our styles or whatever, but that guy used to have me rolling. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's what's up. So, with this show coming up, are you you gonna you gonna talk about uh, the Diddy stuff, the Diddy pictures? Why you change show? your voice when you said that? Cause I just wanna like know I, it's I between me and you. you. Know what, oh, you talking to the whole world? <laughs> <laughs> like I don't see a microphone. It's it's between a, go ahead and do with that. Our listeners want to know. <laughs> the one, no, I'm not asking. But our listeners want to know. <laughs> but but seriously, I'm gonna address a lot of things that have okay. happened in my life and going on in my life. Okay. And I'll just tell you this: what you saw in that picture is not what you saw in that picture. 
and I will explain it at the Comedy Act Theater this weekend. Okay. I don't well, care what you're lying. talking about. Your eyes lying. <laughs> That's right. You and Stevie Wonder saw the same thing. <laughs> Nathan. Y'all didn't see Nathan. Stevie ain't seen me on the boat with you, did he? And nor did you. So how do you feel about the new era of comedy with a lot of comedians coming out from Instagram and doing skits? How do you feel about that? I think that I'm glad that um, there's an opportunity for people to get discovered. Mm -hmm. There's an opportunity for like a lot of older comics talk trash about them. But, you know, you if 20-some years ago, if you could tell me I could have a cell phone and make myself rich and famous, I would have been down with it. Mm -hmm. I um I don't care about them kids that much. The reason I'm not saying it in a bad way, they're gonna do what they wanna do. They're getting mm -hmm. successful. The only thing is that I'm a real craftsman when it comes to stand up. So some of them you get your success and fame, but you know, give um people a good show. That's the only thing I say. But the way comedy's evolved, the shows that they do, that's a good show to them. So I can't be in you know, that's your old way of thinking. I can't be mad because you got the Matt Rifes coming up, the Nate Jacksons coming up, whatever. They found the lane, take advantage of it. They doing some stuff to provide for themselves and their family for the rest of life. More power to them. I just know one thing, you know, I'm going to stay consistent with what I do. Mm -hmm. And as much as they want to call you an old head and all this type of stuff, I'll say uh, George Foreman won uh, heavyweight, became heavyweight champion, of the, uh, heavyweight champion of the world at the age of 50. So if you want to come in, if you want to talk trash, old head, I know one thing you won't do. You won't take it to the stage. Mm. Let's play that game. Period. What do they say? Occur? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. It's cool. Now, I, I can't do occur. I do occur. You know, I got to keep it gay. So I said occur. You heard what I said? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, my last question is, if you had a superpower, what would it be? If I had a superpower, um, damn, I don't want to read minds. <laughs> you don't want to do that. You really hear how she feel about you. You like this, right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you lying. You lying. Yeah. Uh, like if I had a superpower, I would would like to have the power to make people change their ignorant thoughts. Mm -hmm. if, if for somebody ignorant, stupid, I just like, Phew, and you just snap out of it. That would be my superpower would be. Before we wrap up, talk about your experience on BMF. How was that for you? It was, why you got those little secret questions? What you mean? What, what? what you trying to say? I was a punk. I was a punk. No. <laughs> That's what you want to say. I was no, a punk. No, I wasn't was trying TV. to say that. I was waiting for you to say that. How was the experience? I get, I get in your acting bag? No. Uh, they called you. They wanted you. They did. Tasha Smith called me. <laughs> okay. Was, Tasha Smith called me. It was it was definitely sealed with uh, 50 Tasha Smith. And um, the executive producer, his name is Reggie. His name, I feel so bad. His, it'll come to me. Mm -hmm. But that, it's so interesting. I played the character of um, Alvin, was cousin of Lamar. Mm -hmm. And you seen it on the show that I was a punk. Not a punk, but I just wouldn't take it so far. Mm -hmm. But that's what you saw on the camera. But every time Lamar says something slick to me, I came back and roasted him. Yeah. <laughs> and they used to get mad. They'd be like, you can't do that. <laughs> I'm like, why well, I can't do it? They say, because he would have smashed your head through the brick wall, right? I was like, well, just tell him stop eating my hungry man meals. Stop disrespecting me and clean up. They would not let <laughs> They wouldn't me. let you do But that. I understand. That was the character. Mm -hmm. And then I, I'm on, I'm coming back. Okay. I'll just put it like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that was very, very interesting. And that, for me, any, it's just fun for me. Yeah. The crazy thing was Lamar, um, uh, this dude was, was a, um, he's a method actor. Mm -hmm. So he come to work in the morning like a killer. For real? Yep. Because I was been, surprised when I figured out he had the British I know, accent. that's another thing too. <laughs> but he, um, he come, he'd be at the, at, at the, at the, Coffee spot, looking like he about to kill somebody. Like <laughs> he in character. Huh? Yeah, he like this. I'm a comedian. <laughs> Let's go. I'm cracking jokes. <laughs> he used to get mad. I'm like, man, if you don't get that killer ish out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> but Kofi is a dope actor, man. It's like, well, a lot of those British actors are. It's so interesting when you see them on the screen and they was like, actually, want to go get some tea. Right. You be like, what, the, what the hell just, yeah, a sport. You want to go sport or tea? I'm going to go to the loo. I'll be right back. 
<laughs> but talented actor. That show is is doing well. I think it's going to be coming out uh, soon. But they wrapped up uh, over the summer, mm -hmm. so it should be coming back. Fire. Another platform for people to get their shine. But mm -hmm. again, that was the thing they called me. I don't be my agents get mad. Are you going to audition? I'm like, nope, 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 nope. At some point, you get tired of people telling you no. Mm -hmm. And then if it's not really paying my bills like that, I was like, instead of me, and this is where my thoughts are going, instead of me sweating to be in this movie, why don't I write my own movie? Mm. Why don't I do my own thing? You know, do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Tip, I'm sorry that I wasn't in that movie. Department? No, it was another one he did. Just recently, I got, it was something. T.I.'s not really a professional when it comes to booking people for stuff. He called me, they told me, is you coming here or what? <laughs> <laughs> where you at? Right. He like, where you at? <laughs> oh, man, you said you was coming. What else was he to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, scheduling flights? Oh, man. And I feel bad because he's always been. And it was like a last minute thing. I was like, can I get in it? But we're going we gonna to connect, man. We're going to connect on something. But appreciate you, brother. For well, sure. Well, we know you got two shows tonight. You have two <laughs> shows tomorrow. Hopefully, you have time to stop by Bankhead Seafood and get some of that. Uh, Where is tip. it? Uh, right down Bankhead. D is it is it lunchtime? Yeah, it should. Be. Do they, they do like lunch? Stop opening last night. They do lunch. Yeah, yeah. I'll go check it out tomorrow. Bankhead. Where's Bankhead Seafood. All right. Bankhead. Ain't nobody, gonna slide, on me. Ain't nobody gonna slide on me, right? <laughs> Are you good? <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna crash out, right? Nobody say like, slide with y'all. Be like slide for Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> Don't slide for Ashley, son. Yo, yo. Yo, why you ain't slide for Ashley when he brought, they brought that lotion up there? You ain't no real friend. Yeah, I just want to go home. I just want to, yeah, I want to meet Woody. He was trying to get a 3 P white. <laughs> That's all I want to do, man. I, I don't care for them. They don't care for me. I don't care for them. I bet they won't slide on me. I don't care. I changed my life. Change his life. We all can change our life. Man, <laughs> keep keep the laughter in rotation, man. We thank you for your craft, man. You a living legend of my eye. Donnell Robbins! Thank you. <laughs>